Talking Farm with Ed O. Podcast. Hello, everyone. It's Podcast Ed O back at it again with another episode. And for today's podcast, we have our 30-second guest of Callie's Angel. So here is the interview. Hello, everyone. It's Podcast Edo back at it again with another episode with our 32 guests, 30 second guests, Callie Angel. How are yeah. you doing? Hi, good. How are you? I'm doing good today. And um, so for start off, with my first question is I would like to ask is where are you from? Where am I from? I am from Chicago, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, but right now I am currently in Florida, Central mm. Florida. So about an hour away from Orlando. Yeah, I was actually there earlier this year finishing up uh, college, believe it or not. Really? What college did you attend? I went to Full Sail University. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> That's great. That's actually the college that Jay went to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard. And it was... um. There was lots of other stuff that was really interesting. And also, also here's the link for anybody that likes to catch up on those adventures. So uh, next thing that we have. So I was looking at your page and I realized you are a gamer. And yes. I was wondering, how did you get into gaming? Um, well, I think it kind of started off as a kid. Um, I had a older brother. He was two years older than me. And since he was the oldest and he was the boy, he was always interested in video games. So he would always get the new game system or whatever. So I would always watch him play. And I spent so many years like wondering when or if I would get the opportunity to play video games. And I think it, I really hit my stride when I became a teenager. I get mm. more involved in video games. Of course, you know, they have school programs where you can get stipends. So I actually started making money to afford to buy my own video games or people would start buying them for me as gifts. So since then, I would say what, maybe 20, 2008 is when I really started getting into video games. Okay. You're saying like you can make your own video games? I'm sorry. I was I was saying you can make your own video games. Oh no, that would be great. I always thought about getting into that, but uh, I I don't have too much faith in my abilities. Like I would love to get in video game development, but I'm kind of the type of one step at a time, and then we'll see how it goes. So eventually, maybe we'll get there, but. Right now, I'm just enjoying what I play. That's all good. Also, on the note, the second thing I remember seeing from your page is that you were cosplaying a lot. And I was wondering, like, what was the character that influenced you to start cosplaying, by the way? Oof. That is a good question. Um, I think my biggest cosplay... I'm still kind of working on it is my own original Jedi character from Star Wars. Mm. So I'm still working on that. But in the meantime, I still do little cosplays. I think my first one was Princess Mononoke. And I actually sewed the white shirt myself. I actually bought a sewing machine and did all of that. I wanted to do it from hand as best as I could. Now, I know I did Deku as well, but I just bought that one. So it's like, However I feel, whatever is within budget, is it going to be my main thing? No, but I will say I usually try to cosplay when I go to conventions and I haven't been to conventions in about maybe four years. Mm. So the next time I have the opportunity to go to a convention, I might do a little something here or there. I would say on that note, like, what was like the first convention that you went to, by the way? Hmm. The first ever convention I went to was PlayStation Experience in 2017. The mm. first comic book convention I went to was C2E2 
which was also in 2017. In the same year, yeah. Yeah, so C2E2 was actually first. It was earlier that year. And then later that year was the last PlayStation experience because they haven't had one since then. And it breaks Mm -hmm. my heart. All right. And now speaking of gaming, um, also another thing I realized is that you're on Twitch. And I was wondering, like, what was, like, one of the best moments that you have when you were playing on Twitch? <laughs> my funniest moments in general is, and I, I joke about this with my community, because I've been slacking on streaming a little bit. I want to get back there. But I always say that my community loves to see me suffer. When I play what? any type of souls born game, mm. Any that is when I get the highest viewership. That's when people are really active. And sometimes I do rage a little bit because mm. <laughs> I remember I did play uh it was Bloodborne and Demon Souls. And okay. it was just so exciting for me to do. And it was like early in my Souls Born journey because my most recent one, I, I started lives with P. But the most recent one I finished was Eldering, and I actually got the platinum in that. Uh, but when I was playing those games, that's uh, everyone is always glued to when those types of games are being played. So I enjoy uh, playing them. Everyone lo- loves enjoying watching them. So speaking of which, exciting. speaking of which, I my brain thought of a game. I forgot what it was called, but I could I believe I could describe it. Have you played that game where it was like a man in a bucket? And he was trying to like keep going up, up and up. I saw Markiplier play that game. Mm. What was that? Uh, get over it. I think get it was over. Called. Yeah, that's it. That, yeah. yeah, I Have would play that, that game, yet? but I would probably I would probably break my keyboard. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I would say before we move on to like another question is like on that note is like what was like the like the the hardest game that like you play but you believe you can beat it like like the game i forgot what it was called speed run it like super fast but it's super hard Ooh, probably returnal returnal okay returnal was a very hard game because it's like uh what did they call it they call it a roguelike game so if you die you start over from the beginning but they have checkpoints with each of their maps but okay. and then their maps are randomized so it's hmm. like it's very it's a very colorful very visually appealing game and it put me through the ringer for sure oh. and once you beat a boss you have a sense of achievement that's so great that I felt so good and I had ups and downs with that game but my main goal was I'm going to beat it. And especially I was so crazy that I decided to get the second ending to it (laughs) because I found out it was a secret ending. But that game, it was really good. Could I speed run it? Probably. I'm rusty. It's been close to two years since that game has been released. Mm. So it would take me a while to get to it. Yeah, it's not that long, but you know, you got to get that that memory back. It was just like, hmm. (laughs) Like, ah, uh, do I remember your attack patterns? Not really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's really. That's why I haven't went back to Elden Ring because it's like I watched so many videos and, and it's like, will I remember what to do in this situation or am I just going to get smashed? So <laughs> it's it. Speaking, speaking of Elden Ring, I was actually going to save it for the end, but uh, you know a YouTuber that was called the Ackman? No. So basically, there was a, a feud that was going on with another YouTuber. I think he got his account back, even though it wasn't right. He shouldn't. And his name was Quantum TV, and he was talking about Elden Ring. But the thing was, he never played the game, yet he was complaining about it. And the act man got on him. And then Quantum Ring basically was doxing him. And so... That became a long feud, and like everybody had the act man's back. But the crazy part is that recently, even after everything, he got his channel back, but he is dealing with some legal problems. So it's like, it's like, it's we don't even know like when he's going to come back, but it's like, you know, I'll probably say for between me and you and probably everybody else watching that knows about this, we don't want him to come back. 
Please no. See, now I'm going to go and be nosy and see what all the tea is because this sounds interesting. Oh, don't worry. (laughs) He'll be giving a shout out. And I'll not only that, there'll be a link to this video. And, you know, also for you, I'll be sharing it. So I got you. So um, (laughs) speaking of YouTube, now that we're segueing into it, would you like your, you know, content of gaming and stuff? Would you like it to be on YouTube? Like, like not instead of Twitch, but would you like to use YouTube at the same time? I tried that. And it's just, I have such an issue with just being consistent. I think my year, this year, my main problem has been consistency. Um, okay. Because I created my gaming Instagram account and I started yeah. uploading on that every now and again. I have not uploaded on that for like maybe three or four months. Mm. And then now I tried to transition to TikTok. So most of my most recent stuff is on TikTok. And I think I have more videos on TikTok now. Okay. But TikTok, uh, okay. Yeah. And um, of course, now since, you know, Twitch is integrated into YouTube shorts. I've been trying to upload more to YouTube and I just have so much content, especially like (laughs) I haven't uploaded and I should, I know um, Jay, my fiance, he is one of my biggest supporters. And anytime Mm -hmm. I say I'm going to do something, he's going to hold me to it. So uh, I always told him, I want to edit all of these clips of all of these gameplays. And he's like, well, you need to do it. Why aren't you doing it? This is what you're going to do today. Right. And I'm right. like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I have content that I would love to upload to YouTube, but I have a vision for it. And I right. think me having to the time to execute that vision is why I haven't done it yet. So hopefully me and him, we already started making plans for, hey, this is what we're going to do next year because we've been yeah. stacking this year. Right, and right, so I'm right. already getting mentally prepared. Like I'm gonna upload more to my YouTube, okay. upload more to my um Instagram, and just stream more because I saw my stream numbers this year. Because you know yeah. the Twitch does the little review thing. Oh, okay. like these numbers are low, mm. <laughs> and they're the they lowest. They gotta go higher, right? They gotta go up. I'm embarrassed. Like I, what? What is this? Only 300 hours played on my PlayStation. This is crazy. What? Oh, I know, and, and it's just, not getting the views at all. Yeah, so it's like, uh, maybe I need to revamp again and pick a good genre. And now I have a new PC, so it's like now I have access to more quality games that I can actually perform. Like my PC will run it. Yeah. So I dabbled in a little bit of Game Pass. Sad to say. Yeah. <laughs> Dreamcast I, game? No, Game Pass, the Xbox Game, game Pass. Pass, but you know the PC version. Because okay. gotcha. I declare myself as a Sony fangirl. Okay. Sony can almost do no wrong. Almost. There are some things I will not defend Sony <laughs> on. Okay. Like their their price for yeah. PlayStation Plus now. I'm severely <laughs> disappointed. But <laughs> <laughs> I pride I myself on being a Sony girl so getting a new PC and playing Xbox games I feel like I'm betraying them but hey I, I want the experience so. I mean my brain I don't know why my brain was saying it's like maybe they may collab with place I don't know if that's a possible I don't know not like they did in the early days because I remember like most you know yeah, well, anyway. I want to play more Xbox games like I, when I was younger, when I first mm. started gaming, Halo was a big thing for me. Yeah. And it's like I never got to experience any of the other ones. And it's like I have Game Pass now. I can go mm. play Halo. Oh, so you can play like all the games. So mm-hmm. all the consoles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Except for like most of the PlayStation exclusive stuff, but like most of the Xbox exclusive stuff is on uh, PC Game Pass. So okay. I'm trying to dabble in there and see what I can get my hands on. Man, yeah, I mean, you just kind of like answered like kind of the second to last question of like what would be like the future thing, but that's okay because we we're gonna keep going. Um, before we get into like the last part, before I do the usual thing, is um. I was wondering, so it's like two. So I was wondering, how did you meet Jay Hitori? Twitter. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Twitter. Uh, I don't. 
I think he followed me first mm. and he DM'd me. And then I remember I gave him my number. And okay. then one day randomly at work, because I was working overnight, he called me. <laughs> And it just became a, a really good thing. We meshed well, we clicked. And maybe like a year or two later, I was like, you know what? Come come out here for a weekend, come visit. And since then, I think we've been together just over two years. Nice. And we're planning on getting married next year. So Ooh. it's all working out great. I'm glad to hear. Speaking of like collaborations with others, it's like, I was wondering if there's, anybody that you would love to collaborate and also cosplay with in the near future? I haven't thought of any collabs specifically because I would have to think of someone who plays similar games that I play and I'm very nitpicky with multiplayer games per se i used to be a big call of duty girl i'm trying to step away from that so i'm not for sure cosplay would be jay jay okay (laughs) because he actually wants us to he's a big assassin's creed fan okay he wants to do an assassin's creed cosplay and sadly, I've never played an Assassin's Creed game, so maybe that would give me the little nudge I need to get into the that series. That might be the new new video and stuff, you know? Yeah, but um, if anything, because, you know, it's kind of biased because we're together and whatever, but if anything, <laughs> what I would love to do is, like, a group Power Ranger cosplay. Oh, oh it was like, would it be, like, and especially including, like, the Super Sentai Rangers, too? Like, the yeah it would be a lot of people for sure it's like yeah we gotta go from the beginning yeah it would be a lot of work but i think that would be a really fun cosplay Uh, um i think people doing it though yeah yeah i think my most um one that i might do coming up i might do a tanjiro cosplay Okay, you're, you're just, wearing him. You're wearing. Yeah, him. and I just got the earrings too. Oh, right from the show. Okay. So I just got the earrings, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, those earrings are so cute!" And I'm like, "Oh, if only you knew <laughs> what they were from." Yes. So well, my <laughs> brain. You heard of a musical artist named Lynn Lappet? No. So she R&D? had a song that was called uh uh in my mind and it's like the uh course it goes and oh if you knew what goes on in my mind huh, I'm <laughs> gonna look at that song, song though I probably heard another of shout out and recommendation oh so, okay I'm look into that <laughs> so now we're getting to the usual thing that I do with lots of my guests is uh first and favorites and now from especially the last interview I did I'm gonna do it with a little bit of a twist especially going forward too so what was the first and inspirational game that you've ever played of all time? Meaning inspirational is like the game that inspired you to keep gaming. So what was the first game and the game that inspired you? Uh, I think the first game would be Mortal Kombat 2. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing because I was still pretty young, but um, I think that game is also my inspiration as well because Mm. of the lore because even if i don't play that game competitively i am deeply involved in the lore of mortal kombat i've seen all of the movies the web series everything so all right my thing is if a game has lore i will always be interested in it all right. Even if it's a little secretive or something, something to pique my interest. Like, what? This is crazy. This is something different. So that is my first and one of my inspirations. Um, yeah, I love Mortal Kombat. I might suck okay. at it a little bit, but it's it was always... the first and inspirational. Mm-hmm. I think it actually. I was born in 92. So yeah. I think oh, the 31. First game... Yeah. 
31. Yeah, I think that I think the game, the first game came out the year I was born. I think it was like October. I think I looked that up recently. 92. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm up there, but <laughs> it always holds a special place in my heart, Mortal Kombat. So I mean, I'm actually myself, I'm actually getting close to the dirty myself. Like ah, see, next year I'll be 27. So it's like I'm getting there. Well, 30, 30 is a special age. I was yeah. kind of nervous getting into it, but it's like a refresher. I still feel young and it's like... You feel like the 20s and teens, yes. Yeah, course. it's like repeating everything that you couldn't do in your early 20s, basically. You get a lot more freedom. You know the ways of the world. It's just yeah. enjoying yourself now. And you're taking time. It's like patient, yeah. So, um, on the okay, the next one we got is what was the first anime you've seen and what was the inspirational anime that made you like you know anime first anime i seen was dragon ball the first like the actual first first one yes okay. not z not z not dragon the other ball. letters just the mm-hmm. actual like the, X, the, first, the actual first first one yeah. little kid goku with Every, the yeah everybody yeah yeah that i seen that was the first one i seen my most inspirational one would have to be my favorite one, which is yeah. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. All right. I it's, mean, just... <laughs> it's funny because uh, the guest I had a few times ago, uh, Fusion Ha, one of the uh, hosts, that actually was his favorite, but now <laughs> he switched to One Piece, so now you can actually have it now. Now you can have I'll that. T- I will gladly take that up. <laughs> I think he'll probably, I believe his name, uh, Jer- it was the Fusion High podcast, and I believe it was Jer- Jeremy. Yeah, and it was like oh. I think he might. Yeah, I th- he think he. I think he'll give you that for sure. Okay, I was that was his it. favorite for a while, but then, like I said, when I did the interview with them, it switched to One Piece. So I think I think you can have it now. Okay, that's good. I want to give One Piece a chance, but it's just way too much. <laughs> I mean- I mean, it might go flip now. <laughs> yeah, I've heard great things about One Piece, but am I gonna watch it? Ooh, maybe when I'm old and I got enough time to go through how many ever episodes they have by then. But right I now, think now especially because I don't even know if we're at an ending arc or, like I said, the end. We're on a thousand. The episodes are at a thousand now. It's just like mm, that's too much. <laughs> a thousand that's episodes. Too- yeah, I mean, but as long as people are still enjoying it, that's what matters. Because you would hate yeah. to watch a thousand episodes, and it's just a snooze right. fest. So, yeah. if it works, it works. It's great, right? So, one of our last ones that we got, and I think it's probably like the last ones before, like the usual thing is, what was the first movie and TV show? And on that note, what was you know, the inspiration of movies and TV shows. That is a good question. It probably may have, ooh, the first. Uh, The earliest ones I remember. WWF wrestling. (laughs) I remember watching that every week on the little TV every single week. Me and my family were obsessed with it. Even my mother used to watch WWF. Wow. Her favorite wrestler was Sandra Tiger. So Tiger, all right. Yeah, I think that was the first for sure. The apart from Dragon Ball, but you know. Yeah. Regular TV show. It's a little different because we're reaching. Yeah. Oh. I just thought of something. Keep going, though. I just thought of something. Oh, okay. Inspirational TV show would probably have to be, ironically, Zoom. It was a what TV show. What we're doing right now, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was a TV show that came on, I think, PBS or something. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it'd be a bunch of kids doing activities, um, yeah. making arts and crafts and stuff. And I was really, really crafty. I always wanted my hands in something, keep my hands busy. Right. It's either I'm keeping my hands active or I'm reading because I used to read a lot as a kid. So that made me want to be more hands-on with stuff, which is probably why I'm into computers. Because, hmm. of course, 
where we grew up with technology yeah. so it's just natural for us to know how the stuff works it's so. interesting because the show like before it came back for like the early 21st century it was actually in the 70s like it was actually a show that ran the same amount of time as sesame street and another show that also made a comeback for a little bit the electric company so yeah it was in the same yeah they both were in the same ballpark in the 70s as sesame street and mr rogers neighborhood i didn't even know that see i learned something new today (laughs) so um one of the things i thought of i'm not sure if you have or haven't but i'll ask is uh with anime there is also within it the artist which is like j-pop and i was wondering before i specifically asked like have you listened to j-pop artists before i don't think so i think i have i have one song saved but i'm not sure if that counts as j-pop right was it from an anime though no, it's not from an anime. Oh. I do have I do have the theme song from uh the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen saved. Okay. I and I did save a few songs, a few opening themes from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yeah. Um and this one was just some random song I found on TikTok. Yeah. But well, now I could probably I would probably say Another thing I thought about is um, we can't really go with first because usually I'm going to believe all of us we have baby food. I do. I'm going to have a feeling another guest is going to be like, no, nah, actually, in the first baby it's like, so what is um your favorite food? My favorite food? Pizza. Pepperoni pizza. Stuffed pizza? crust pepperoni pizza from Pizza Hut specifically. From but... Pizza Hut specifically? <laughs> I, I, I like, like pizza once too. A week. <laughs> once a week i gotta have pizza and one day i'm gonna get tired of pizza but i love cheese i'm a cheese girl i love cheese anyway i can get cheese pizza is the easiest way to get cheese so i mean eat pizza i love it wait don't you like pepperoni too oh yeah pepperoni pizza is the go-to if i can get extra pepperoni and extra cheese i am good to go all right so one of our last questions we have before we say our goodbyes is, um, <coughs> excuse me, how can we find you? Like, how can we find your socials and also potential collaborations with you? Um, well, I'm always on Twitter. So at Kylie Angel, um, I have my Instagram at Kylie Angel Plays, also on TikTok at Kylie Angel those are the main places where you can find me is sometimes I might pop up on your YouTube feed just take mm. a little look see see if you like some most of that stuff is old so I might have to you know update everything I'll, I'll it, yeah. but, <laughs> but that's where I mainly am I'm on Twitter almost every day I'm scrolling on Instagram even though I think my notifications may be a little wonky on my gaming Instagram it's all good. About that. But yeah, my personal Instagram, if I like you enough, you get on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mainly those things. I'm quite easy to find. I try to keep my username the same everywhere so no one can get lost or confused. So right. as long as you got the Kylie Angel in there, you'll be able to find me even on PlayStation, Kylie Angel. Oh, right. PlayStation Live. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Xbox is that Kylie Angel. Steam, the same thing. So Hmm. I try to keep all of my socials the same. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I guess we got to say our farewells. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for having me. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. And for our shout outs today, we got Michael Brown, and Peace on the Streets Radio. Thanks once again to Callie's Angel. So now, I'm going to see you later. Talking from with Edo.